All right, so we're starting at the very beginning. We're talking about shadows. So what I want you to notice about this photograph of this cat, it looks like it's taken from above, is the shadow. So that shadow that's falling onto the ground is called a cast shadow. So shadows that are cast are falling onto something away from the object. They're always going to be next to what's called the form shadow. So here's the outline that you're seeing there. Cast shadows tend to have a sharp edge to them. That's why this one looks kind of sharp. They also tend to lighten up the farther away from the object they get. So they kind of do an ombre. Next, we're going to look at an example of a form shadow. It's a picture of the moon. So a moon essentially is a sphere. It's a ball shape. Oftentimes the moon is partly in shadow. I just want to point out that this is actually not a cast shadow, but a different kind. It's a form shadow. And you can see I've drawn an orange line delineating the form shadow from the other tones. There's a second line there, and that's to show you where the mid-tone range is. Form shadows, unlike cast shadows, are soft edged. That means there has to be a transition from light to a little bit darker, to a little bit darker, to even darker, so it's incrementally. So I've popped up there some values, or the circles, and it's a value range. So it kind of ranges from dark to medium to lighter to lightest. Those are the colors that you're seeing in that moon. There's actually many more shades in between those four. Understanding that a cast shadow is sharp and a form shadow is soft-edged is detrimental to good art. So here's what we're looking at when we're talking about basic forms. Those arrows represent the lights, where the lights are coming from. You should always have a clear understanding of the light source of where it is. So that means that the light side is on the left and the right side is in shadow. And that's true of both the cone and the cube, but you're seeing it more obviously on the cube. So whenever you do a cube, you should have a light side, a medium side, and a little bit darker side, typically. So here's our cylinder. It looks kind of like a toilet paper roll. Anyway, it's got some cool things going on. First of all, let's talk about that term ellipse. Ellipse is simply that kind of narrow oval. It's like a pulled oval on the top of like a jar or any type of cylinder, really also a partial ellipse at the bottom as well. Now on to my favorite form, the sphere. All right, so there's the cast shadow. You can see the cast shadow is clearly defined. It's running right behind or to the right of the sphere itself. And you can see that the form shadow is adjacent to the cast shadow. That's true of every form shadow. It's always going to be near a cast shadow, especially if it's an object on a tabletop. But trees do this too. Your body does this too when you're walking down the street at like sun tide or sunset. You can see your shadow being cast onto the ground. And then those are the mid-tones. Those are those middling grays. So a medium kind of gray. And you can see on this ball or sphere, it's right in the middle area. Lastly is the highlights. The highlights are the brightest part of an object. So even a dark object can have a highlight. It doesn't have to be a light colored object. And there they are right there. So you've got to have those key ingredients. So I want to show you some still life so you can see where the light source is emanating from. So in this case, it's coming from that left hand side. Knowing where the light source is coming from is the first thing you should look for before you shade. So figure it out. You can tell because of the highlights, the placement of the form shadow, and definitely from the cast shadow. So in this picture, it looks to me like it's coming straight from above. Maybe even from a slight angle from just in front of the picture setup. You can tell where the shine is on the apple that it's in front. You can tell on that half slice of the apple that it's catching the light that's why it's so beautifully illuminated same thing on the picture it's bright on the top and then as it turns away from the light it slowly moves into shadow so that is a soft shadow because it's a form one the one that's actually on the object itself 
Okay, teaching you shading is one of the most important skills I can teach you, and also what to look for when you're shading. So I almost always go for the darker side first. And this works really well when you transition to painting too, but that's what I'm doing here. I'm going right to that dark side, and I want you to notice that I'm going in these kind of tight ovals, hard to kind of see, but that's what I'm doing. And I'm going all one way with my pencil stroke. Now I've time lapsed this whole thing so you don't have to watch me intricately do it. But here's the basic rule when you're doing a cube. You have to have one side that is the light side, one side that is medium in tone, and one side that is in shadow. That's how you make a cube look three-dimensional. I am using the same pencils you are. I'm using a 6B on that darker side, but I didn't press all the way down. I used the 2B, which is the yellow Ticonderoga pencil on the top. And here's the kicker. We're going to be using white pencil for that light side. So what I'm doing right there at this moment is I'm shading in a little bit of a gap there. There's a shadow where the block doesn't quite touch down all the way on the surface. And that's where my cast shadow is going to lean. So remember I talked about this earlier, wherever you have a form shadow, the cast shadow has to be right adjacent, right near your form shadow. So form shadows are always on the object, cast shadows are falling onto the ground or onto some surface. So here's the rule with cast shadows. Notice first that I'm going in a particular direction, I'm going horizontal. That's because I want this to look like it's being stretched and leaning that way. If I were to go up and down with my stroke, it would disrupt that kind of effect. So go side to side horizontally. Then I want you to focus on transitioning. So cast shadows can have a little bit of a sharp edge to them. Not too sharp, but they have a sharper edge certainly than a form shadow. The other thing I want you to keep in mind is that form shadows or cast shadows should get lighter the farther away they get from the object. So I'm, I'm paying attention to that. Here is where I'm going to start to put in the white. And this is the fun part because you're working on tone paper. Um, also, mind your gaps when you're shading. Don't leave huge holes or gaps. I want you to do it lightly. Oh, you could also opt to do this using crosshatch if you have experience with that. So that's one way you could approach this too. Make sure before you even start to shade though that your outline is light. I'm actually going to go in and adjust some of these outlines. You can see on the top of the box to the right, um, there's you can hardly see the edge there. That's good. You don't want to see too much of an outline here like you can on my light side to the left of the cube. So I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna erase that out a little bit. Because remember, outlines make for a flat form. If you can let go of some of your outlining habits, you're going to be a much more superior artist. Ah, already looks so much better. Outlines, psh, they're for beginners. And my aim is to make you guys ready for advanced someday. I want you to have skills. So my paper is a little bit bowed. That's why the cube looks a tiny bit distorted. It's not really distorted. It's just the paper. And also my um, clipboard is angled when I'm drawing. But that's basically what you have to have. You can actually see that the top side doesn't have a ton of shading on it. It's pretty minimal. I'm letting the toned paper do some of the work. Yay! All right, so we're gonna move on to the cylinder. So same deal. Starting with the dark side, going one direction with my stroke. And I'm going into those shadow shapes first. So I'm looking at that reference picture, that kind of like toilet papery roll, and I'm working off of that. So you can see on that form shadow, that's the shadow on the left, that I'm trying to make that a soft shadow. It transitions, it goes from like a value four on your value scale to a value three as it heads towards the light. And you wanna think of all form shadows as an ombre that's happening. So in this case, 
it's darker on the left and it should incrementally get lighter as it moves towards that right side that's being illuminated. You could also see it the other way that the light is shining from the right side and the farther away that object turns, rotates away from the light, the more in shadow it gets. And there's that cast shadow, sharp, but fading as it moves away from the actual object, the form. So just to remind you, forms are 3D, shapes are 2D. So on the white, same deal, I pick a direction and I'm actually trying to kind of wrap my line around the form when I do that. So I'm curving it a little bit and I stick with that direction. And I'm also trying to fade that light as, or white as it goes towards the midtones. So the cone is very similar to the cylinder. It's got that same ellipse base, right? But the only thing you have to realize is that every shadow radiates from the point. So you just have to make sure your shadow is aligned up with the tip, almost like if you were going to take a big slice of pizza and cut it up into five more slices. One slice will be in the shadow side, which is the very darkest darks. Then it'll go from a, a darker shadow to a little bit lighter to a little bit lighter until you move all the way towards the light. Now, when you're doing a cone or a cylinder, the light source and how it's illuminating the object also can factor in because you can have shadows on both sides. That's a possibility. They're probably not going to be the same degree of darkness. There's going to be one shadow darker, one shadow lighter. So you always have to be observant of the objects you're actually drawing. And again, same approach. Go on with the dark side first. This is a form shadow because it's on the actual cone itself. So I have to remind myself, okay, fade as you go towards the light. Fade, don't leave gaps in your shading. Fade it, make it be an ombre. And then in all of these, the cast shadow is darker than the form shadow. So I always compare shadow like values to make sure I know that because sometimes that's not the case. But in all of these, the shadow that's on the ground, the cast shadow, is in fact darker than the form shadow. And you can see that the cast shadow actually has the shape of the object, but it's like distorted. So in this case, it's kind of making a triangular shape there. Make sure that you do not put white and graphite together. They always have to have a buffer of paper in between them. So in this case, the paper bag showing through. So I'm gonna let that white just melt into the brown of the paper bag. I'm not going to put the white right next to the graphite. I'm gonna have a buffer. Do the same thing. I accidentally didn't record the first part, but you guys already know the routine. You're starting off with the form shadow. In this case, the form shadow looks almost like a crescent shape. Just realize that not every shade within that form shadow is equal. So I want you to kind of pick out where are the darker areas and where are the lighter areas. So if we were talking about that value scale, that seven step value scale, um, there are some darker hues like a six and some fives, but also some fours in there on that shadow side. The cast shadow is going to be darker than the form shadow. So you wanna reserve the number seven value for that cast shadow. And make sure your shadow does that. It curves around just like a crescent. This is essentially like shading in a moon. And I always go a little bit lighter than I think. And then I go back over the top of that with some more shading. And again, I'm using the same pencils that you are, a 2B, a 4B, and a 6B. Here's all those midtones happening. Remember, this is a form shadow, so I'm letting it be super soft. 
looks like with some of those other forms, I've actually erased out some of the outlines, especially on the light side there. So I've erased a little bit of the outline. I'm probably going to erase a little bit more, but I'm starting on the highlight and letting the highlight fade into the brown of the paper. So here's the finished sheet. You got the cube, the cone, the sphere, the cylinder. You can work in any order you want.